Different regions of the world have different fats that we can utilize that all have different benefits. So you go to the grocery store and you find all these crazy expensive blends of oils when in reality you can just kind of make your own. But we run into one big problem. We run into activating those oils within the body, actually doing something. I'm gonna explain what that means. So I'm gonna show you in this video is how to make the perfect oil with the perfect ratios that you can keep in your fridge or you can keep in your cabinet and utilize for cooking, utilize for salad dressings, whatever. Okay, so the whole idea here is I have ghee, I have macadamia nut oil, I have olive oil, and I have avocado oil. Okay, and I'll explain why these particular fats are exactly what you wanna use in a given blend. But first, let me kind of explain the ratios and I'll explain the science as I go. So first and foremost, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have a little jar or whatever that I'm gonna mix them in. And in this case, let's actually measure it out. So this little sucker is a quarter cup. So I want a half a cup of macadamia nut oil. This is just to give you the idea of the ratio here. So the primary constituent of this is going to be macadamia nut oil. The reason I want macadamia nut oil as the primary constituent is it is the highest monounsaturated fat oil that exists. And it is the lowest omega-6 profile oil that you're gonna find. Less than 2% of the oil in macadamia nut oil is omega-6, which means you have a very stable fat that it is pretty hard to overdo, for lack of a better way of saying it. So if you were to overdo a bunch of olive oil or a bunch of avocado oil, you'd end up with an abundance of omega-6s, which is largely pretty inflammatory. Now, the other benefit that I like with macadamia nut oil is something called omega-7, palmitoleic acid. Now, this palmitoleic acid has its own hormone-like property. It's called lipokine. And this lipokine sends a signal to actually slow down new fat formation. So it slows down de novo lipogenesis. So it is largely a very fat-burning food, a very fat-burning fat. Okay, then the next step, in this case, I have good, high-quality olive oil oil, which obviously is a very healthy, very powerful oil, but we'll explain why it's a different ratio in just a second. So in this case, I'm going a quarter cup. Look at the color of that. That's what your olive oil should look like. It should be deep green, which means it has a lot of chlorophyll in it. Okay, we're going for a quarter cup of olive oil in this case. Now, the benefit that we get from olive oil that we don't necessarily get from macadamia nut oil is twofold. Okay, one, we get something called hydroxytyrosol. Hydroxytyrosol is a super powerful antioxidant that is 10 times more powerful than green tea. So it's one of those powerful antioxidants that's out there. But the cool thing about hydroxytyrosol is it can cross through the blood-brain barrier. Okay, so what that means is we get a little bit of a brain protective benefit. So we have the macadamia nut oil that's giving us the fat burning effect. We're getting the olive oil that's giving us the brain effect. But then there's also another effect that comes with the olive oil and that is the oleic acid. Now, oleic acid turns into something called OEA, oleolethanolamine, within the body. What that does is it activates a fat transporter called CD36. So whereas the macadamia nut oil stops the formation of new fat, the olive oil actually upregulates the utilization of fat. Okay, so we have fat mobilization, fat utilization, brain optimization, and then we had avocado oil into the mix. The reason I'm adding avocado oil, and I'm gonna do this at a quarter cup too, is because again, it's also going to have the OEA, the oleic acid effect, but it's also going to have a higher smoke point. So simply by adding this into the mix, we're making the fat more stable. So now I add the avocado oil into the mix. So we did half a cup macadamia nut oil, quarter cup of olive oil, quarter cup of avocado oil, okay? And then there's one more little thing I wanna add in there, and this is ghee. Okay, ghee, in my opinion, is one of the best super fats that's out there. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball this one, but I'm gonna do about a rounded tablespoon or so of ghee. Now, ghee is a highly stable fat. Okay, you can cook with it, you can do a lot of things with it. And one of the best things about ghee is the fact that it mm. turns into what is called butyrate very quickly within the body. So that means within your gut, it turns into something that helps ketones form. So it's one of the most ketogenic fats that you can consume. So if you're doing a low carb diet, this is one of the best things that you could have. So what we're gonna do now, okay, we're going to make this already awesome profile of fats even more stable and even more biologically active within the body. I have an awesome oil infuser here. Okay, this is from a company called Levo, which I'll explain in a second. Now, this one is super unique because it's very, very easy, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna infuse the oil with a couple of different flavors. Now, this isn't about just infusing it with flavors. This is about finding a way to optimize these fats that are in this blend right here. The big thing we have to focus on with any kind of vegetable fat or vegetable oil in general, okay, granted these are healthy vegetable oils, they're still a vegetable oil, 
It's something called lipid peroxidation. What that is is when these fats come into contact with oxygen in our body, it breaks down the fats more. And then when those fats break down, they break down into different fats. And then you have more lipid peroxidation. So basically you have this constant denaturing of these fats. And my goal is to always create a fat that is stable. Okay, I like using ghee most of the time because it is so stable, but I also like the benefits that come with the other things, okay? So we have three different sort of kinds of rancidity or three sort of kinds of oxidation that occur. We have regular aerobic oxidation where you're just combining it with oxygen. We have hydrolytic rancidity, which is a little bit more of something that happens uh, with enzymes and can also happen within the body, but it generally happens when an oil is just hanging out and not in the body for a while. Then of course we have microbial rancidity, which has to do with sort of the, uh, the effect of bacteria and stuff on an oil that can break it down. So a lot of things that can denature an oil. So if you infuse it with certain flavors and certain compounds, you can protect that. So one of the big ones that I want to do in this case, I want to use rosemary, but I don't just stick rosemary in the oil. It doesn't really work. So that's where using like an infuser or just heating it up and doing it properly and doing it for a very long time would typically work. So in this case, this is really easy because this oil diffuser just makes it simple. So I can just add the oil. In fact, that's what I do. In a second, we'll add the oil. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add the herbs. Now, this is what you want to add to your oil, whether you're using a diffuser or not. Okay. And in this case, it doesn't really matter how much, but I'm going to put a bunch of rosemary in here because rosemary contains something called hispiduline. So if you add rosemary to your oil, it's going to, believe it or not, activate what is called PPAR alpha more. What this means to you is that it's going to activate the genetic process, the gene expression that allows you to burn fat easier. And that is a given fact. So basically, in short, it upregulates the enzymes that allow you to utilize fat more. So this is an amazing thing to infuse an oil with. Now, additionally, there are some interesting studies that take a look at a lot of the Mediterranean spices. Okay, they look at oregano, which I've got here. I'm gonna add some oregano. Also looks at sage. They also look at, of course, the rosemary like we talked about. They look at some of these other ones like thyme, which I'm not gonna add, worry about adding thyme. I just kinda wanna use rosemary. I'm gonna add some more of this and oregano. And again, it has to do with the hispiduline. Okay, so that's going to activate that fat burning enzyme process. But the cool thing is these same pieces, especially oregano, has an antioxidation effect. So when you're creating an oil that's gonna be really stable like this and you infuse some oregano or you infuse something like sage or thyme into it, you're getting an antimicrobial effect and you're getting an effect that prevents it from oxidizing. Now, one of the things that would prevent it from oxidizing even more would be clove. But I'm not exactly sure we wanna have clove in our oil. It just doesn't sound like the greatest tasting thing. But by far, clove had the strongest effect at avoiding lipid peroxidation. Okay, so now we've got our perfect blend. So here's what I'm gonna do. So in this case, I've got my herb pod. I put it right in here, pour my oil in. Make sure that, that there we go. Make sure the ghee gets in there. Okay, and this is super, super easy. Again, you could heat your oil, but the problem with heating your oil is you run the risk of you changing the oil, changing the form of the oil. This infuses these compounds into it, so it's pretty cool. So I choose my cycle. In this case, I want to infuse. I'm gonna, in this case, probably only need to, just the delicate, these delicate oils, I could probably only infuse it for about 45 minutes to an hour and probably be fine. Because the avocado oil is in there stabilizing things, I can probably crank it up to about 200 degrees and be just fine. So in this case, then I hit the play button, start button. It's gonna go through a warm up process and then it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna infuse my oil. So it's gonna take about an hour to infuse the oil in there. So if you wanna check out this infuser, by the way, I put a link down below, it's called Levo. It's very, very, very cool, seriously. changing my game in terms of making all kinds of different fun oils. So you don't have to do it just to have a super health perspective. If you wanted to infuse avocado oil with garlic or you wanted to infuse olive oil with onion, if you wanted to just give your oils a specific flavor and a specific kind of reaction, you can use this. So super, super cool. We've all seen like water infused with different flavors, but we don't see oil infused with flavors that are homemade. So you can also use butter. Like if you want to just cut up pads of butter and put it in there and flavor your butter to make garlic butter. Maybe you're making scampi or something 
something, you could totally use this thing. So it's super awesome. So that's going to rock and roll for about an hour. So it's infusing those flavors and infusing those different antimicrobial effects that we want. But let's talk really quick about what kind of fats you typically want to use for what. Okay, so a saturated fat, believe it or not, is something that is going to be very, very beneficial when it comes down to cooking. Usually you're more stable. Okay, so we look at oxidation and a saturated fat has more bonds, more hydrogen bonds. Okay, so that means that it's very, very saturated, which means it has less opportunity for oxygen and free radicals to affect the fat. But there's also downsides to using saturated fats. Saturated fats are actually harder on the gut, right? So they can trigger lipopolysaccharides to leach into the bloodstream, which means that you have kind of an inflammatory response. So although saturated fats are good for stability and good for the fatty acid profile, it's not something we want to be completely loading up on. And then if you go too far down the other direction, you don't get a good balance. So like macadamia nut oil is generally, I wouldn't say it's a fragile oil, but it's a delicate oil with a delicate flavor that you usually don't want to be cooking at a high temperature with. You usually want to be using it for drizzling and things like that. And olive oil, contrary to popular belief, if it's good quality extra virgin olive oil, it can usually handle a pretty good degree of temperature. Okay, it's usually when it's just lower quality olive oil that you run into a problem. But most of the time, I would recommend using olive oil over warm dishes. Okay, it tastes good on cold dishes too, but you can use it at a relatively warm temperature. I wouldn't recommend cooking at high heat. And then avocado oil, this is really interesting because there's a study that was published out of UC Davis that found that 82% of avocado oils that are on the market are not even really avocado oil. Sometimes they're full-blown soybean oil. It's just, it was terrible. It was terrible to find out. And a couple of brands that they came out and said were legit were Chosen Foods and also Marianne's. Now, we don't know some of these other brands because they didn't list all of them. So there are some other ones that are still good. I'm just saying that these are the ones that they came right out and said, these are good to go. So in this case, combining that avocado oil, it's very important that you're using a high quality one. So again, the big ratio here is coming from the macadamia nut oil because that's going to have the largest secondary benefit. Okay, we get the fat from it, but we're also, of course, getting that palmitoleic acid that's having that positive effect on our insulin because it's improving our beta cell survival rate. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in and please make sure you check out Levo down below so that you can get your hands on a pretty dang awesome kitchen tool that's going to level up your keto and fat game.